On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 2005. We're going to be taking a look at Katie Lang, and she's going to be performing Hallelujah. <laughs> Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So let's get Katie up on screen and see how she gets on. going to jump in here as always the link to this video is going to be in the description below so you guys can check it out there without me interrupting it but this performance by Katie Lang is just on a totally different level vocally because of the control the dynamic control as well not just of the techniques and having the control of those but rolling those all into the dynamic expression and this is what we get from Katie throughout the whole performance, starting off with just the piano and her voice. She starts out really understated and then starts to just put a foot on the accelerator a little bit with her chord coordinations. Towards the end of the song, she's just connecting her vocal cords even more and leaning more into chest voice, but previously, She's been going into a lighter sound, sometimes breathy as well. There is so much in this vocal delivery 
And we have the cry in there as well. And it's no surprise to find out that KD Lang was massively inspired by Patsy Cline. And you can go and watch the video that I did on Patsy Cline if you want to independently, because I do dissect the cry in that particular analysis because of the way that Patsy used to deliver her vocals. But this cry is so evident in this performance with KD that it just draws you in. And the other thing that I want to mention as well is the Manitoba Orchestra that we have because it's so well played dynamically as well. When we do start up, the focus is just KD Lang's voice. And that will be the focus for the whole performance because it is so engaging. But then when you listen to how this has been arranged and how it is performed live, the orchestra, the whole band are absolutely spot on throughout the whole performance. The other thing is the song that's being performed here because the Leonard Cohen version wasn't a huge hit straight off the bat, but since it just grew in popularity and then went on to be covered thousands of times by thousands of different artists. And if we're talking about YouTube, probably millions of different times by various YouTubers, but being able to take a song that everybody knows so well and put this kind of spin on it and also get you to connect with the performance so much is such a difficult thing to do. The way that she delivers the song with the theatrical aspects as well. I mean, who noticed the way that when she said about being tied to the chair, she was tying her hand up in the cord that's attached to the microphone. So that lead that she's now got around her wrist is all part of the show and also her facial expressions, the way that she moves around the stage. It is so engaging from every single aspect. But the first thing that I wanna jump into is putting the spotlight on that cry. And it's interesting the way that KD uses this technique and it's on the H of hallelujah. So it means that when she starts the note, her vocal cords are apart because in order to say an H sound, it is there's no chord connection there. You're not making a note, but what KD's doing here is starting with the vocal cords apart and then she's bringing them together lightly so that they just touch. And if you were to listen to this in super slow motion, you'd hear a really high pitch before the vocal cords come together to then produce the note that she's after in the song. But here we get a great example. I have cued the video to a point where she sings hallelujah twice and puts the cry on the H of hallelujah both times. But have a listen to this and hopefully you'll be able to spot it. And there we have it. What a great example that is of the cry just coming in before the note that Katie's singing. Obviously, this takes great vocal technique and such relaxation in the throat. This isn't being strained, and you can hear just by the high-pitched cry that we get before Hallelujah comes in that it's not being forced. It's just allowed to happen, but there's so much emotion in there. Something else that I want to draw your attention to is the way that Katie makes a journey out of her vocal delivery throughout the whole performance. And I'm going to cue the video to each delivery of Hallelujah, the last in each chorus, to show you how she changes it in order to take you on a journey and not just give you the same expression or the same notes or the same register of her voice over and over again. She really does change it up. Let's listen to the first Hallelujah. And there it is. So it was just one held note with a little bit of vibrato mixed in there towards the end as well. So under control with KD Lang's vocal, that is something that you just experience the whole time. Totally under control. There was a no point throughout that note, but this whole performance that you feel like she hasn't got everything under control. But that was just a single note that was held. It had a little bit of air in the sound as well. So I've just cued it forward to the second hallelujah in that second chorus and listen to the way that KD delivers this vocal when compared with the first one. It was just a held note first time. Let's listen to this. Hallelujah. 
and there it is. So this time we've got not only the maintenance of the air in the tone, but we've got a total change in vocal registers because she's starting off in her chest voice and then she allows that note to flip up into her head voice, still maintaining that airy tone. We've also got that change in pitch that we had from that first hallelujah. So it means that on the journey, we're now visiting a different site because we're now hearing the notes that we didn't hear on that first hallelujah, but we did hear it in the second. So now I've queued it up to the third hallelujah and Considering that we've had the first hallelujah quite understated, the second hallelujah increasing in pitch, but still a light airy tone and flipping up into head voice using a different vocal register. It's interesting to see what KD does here, because let's bear in mind, we're not at the end of the song yet. So you don't wanna to peak too early. So let's see what KD does. I have queued it a little bit further forward before the hallelujah, just to appreciate the strings that are coming in here as well. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And there it is. It is pretty much a carbon copy of the last hallelujah we heard. So it means that Katie is leaving herself somewhere to go because going to a lighter vocal register with that head voice, it means that now she's holding back her secret weapon, which is going to be connecting fully in chest voice to reach the crescendo by the end of the song, which is the peak of that mountain. That's where you want to take people with your vocals. But this is the point. She's already got this worked out. She's gonna take you on not only an interesting musical journey, but an emotional one as well. And by gradually increasing the pitch, which she has now reached with the hallelujah in head voice, when she hits that in chest voice, it's gonna have such a dramatic impact emotionally. So I've just queued it forward to the peak of the mountain in terms of hallelujahs, and let's listen to the way that KD delivers this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there we have it. So just all in chest voice now. It's so dramatic the way that she doesn't flip up into head voice here. She's got total control the whole time and that last note just holding on to it and then bringing in that slow controlled vibrato and the way that you can hear her sliding between notes. This is what's keeping her in this register, the chest register that she's using, because before, when she flipped over into head voice, you hear that little break in there. So it means that by keeping the notes connected and sliding up, you can't flip over into head voice because the notes have to break off in order to do that. So when she goes, hallelujah, those notes are connected. Obviously, she's going to sing it a hell of a lot better than I ever could, but it's such control and it's just putting the cherry on top with that vibrato because a lot of singers can hit pitches. They can have great breath support. They can hold notes for a long time, but their vibrato sometimes just is a little bit too fast in frequency. It's not even, it doesn't sound under control, but Katie Lang, you just feel like her voice is under total control 100% of the time. You'll also notice just from a mic technique perspective, the way that Katie, when she's singing, in order to get that fade out, keeps that note going, holds the vibrato and just takes that microphone further and further away from her mouth in order to get that slow fade out and all of these things that are applied from that technique perspective from Katie to just get the perfect performance. But let's watch the rest of the performance and appreciate that final hallelujah in context. I 
to shoot somebody who outdrew ya It's not a cry that you hear at night It's not someone who's seen the light It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah 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 And there we have it, just drinking that in, the standing ovation, quite rightly. That is one of those standalone performances of such a well-known song. The other thing that I do want to point out, when Katie goes into her chest voice right at the end of the performance, it's interesting in that sometimes you want to leave people at the peak of the mountain, and when you do that, the crowd will be excited and they'll be really not thinking about necessarily the song because of the excitement that you've left them on the peak of a mountain. Whereas here, Katie Lang, it's all brought back down again to a level where she's hitting a very light head voice coordination with the final note of the song, holding it for a long time. The orchestra just brings everything down. So it leaves you at the point of contemplation rather than excitement. And this is something that you'll find, especially with ballads and slower tempo compositions, you want to be left sometimes in that place of contemplation and appreciation rather than excitement. And that's exactly what's happening here musically. And KD Lang is the perfect vocalist to be able to execute this live. It's the journey that we go on. When you see fantastic vocalists, they can just take you from point A to point B, C, D, E, as many sites as you want to see. And then by the end of the song, you've gone full circle. And just to point out at the beginning of the video, when I said about just the piano being played and KD coming in with her vocal, how it was so understated, that's exactly how we finish the composition and the performance here. It has gone full circle. But when you're talking about a performance and a vocalist like this, you could go on for years with the analysis because there is so much in there. But if you're wanting to play this on the guitar, by the way, it's gonna be relatively simple depending on what key you play it in. Generally, everyone just sticks this in G. This is actually in E, I believe, or at least that's gonna be your first chord. I think the original was in C, but anyway, it's been played in so many different keys because it's been covered so many times. But you probably wanna start with G. It's gonna be the easiest way to play it. I could grab a guitar here, which I will do, even though I've got a cap on the third fret here from when I was last playing, which must have been a while ago, because my little finger is still recovering, so I'll have to leave that out of the playing. 
The time signature as well, you want to be counting up to three or six. So when you're going one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, as long as you stick to that, you'll be fine. If you're playing this finger style, same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Just follow that pattern. I'm gonna fast forward it a little bit. I'm gonna to have to play the C add nine, barring my third finger because my little finger being out of action. But we move from this G, C add nine, D, E minor, C add nine, D, D sharp diminished, E minor. Now we're into our hallelujah, which is the C add nine. E minor. C add nine again. G, D. Back into the G. <laughs> That's where your little finger would be playing the high E string, but it's gonna be. Like that. So. That's going to be the progression, I think, for the whole song. So you can just play through that. I don't want this video to go on for too long, but I do want to cover KD Lang's history and career just briefly. And after leaving secondary school, she was a huge fan of Patsy Cline and set up a Patsy Cline tribute band. And this was in 1983. They were called the Reclines. And in 1984, they released a truly Western experience. And this was released as KD Lang and the Reclines. And that actually got national attention. She started to play in country and Western venues in Canada. And she was actually described as a Canadian cow punk by Rolling Stone magazine due to the blending of musical genres. She won a Juno Award in 1985 for Most Promising Female Vocalist, and in 1987, she released Angel with a Lariat, and this was still as Katie Lang and the Reclines. In 1988, she performed the Alberta Rose at the closing ceremony of the Winter Olympics. 1987 was a huge year for Katie because she was chosen by Roy Orbison to perform a duet on his song called Crying, and they would both go on to win a Grammy for that in 1987. But she was also awarded Entertainer of the Year from the Canadian Country Music Association, as well as winning two Female Vocalist of the Year awards in 1988 and 1989. But the Entertainer of the Year award, she would go on to win that again for the next three years. In 1988, she released her debut solo album, and that was called Shadowland. And that won Album of the Year at the Canadian Country Music Awards. She also supplied backing vocals for the Roy Orbison TV special, and that was called A Black and White Night. In 1989, she released Absolute Torch and Twang, and this won a Grammy, as well as Full Moon of Love, getting to number one in the Canadian country charts. And that album was released again as KD Lang and the Reclines. That same year, she performed on Dwight Yoakam's album that was called Just Looking for a Hit, and Dwight is on the channel here somewhere if you want to check him out independently. In 1992, she released Ingenue, and this was a huge album. It did have on it the single Constant Craving, which was a monster hit everywhere, multi-million seller, critically acclaimed. After this as well, she did come out as being a lesbian, and unfortunately, some radio stations then banned her music after this news, which just <laughs> seems to be the most crazy thing ever to say that you really love someone's music and then you hear that they're gay and then suddenly you don't like their music anymore. So I just don't understand that. But anyway, going forward, she released Miss Chatelaine as well, which turned into a top 10 single. Just a bit of interesting trivia about Constant Craving because KD Lang in 1997 received a writing credit for Anybody Seen My Baby, which is a Rolling Stones track. And Mick and Keith, and that's Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, got together and wrote the song and the melody was exactly the same as Constant Craving. It just so happened that Mick's daughter had been listening to Constant Craving, but Mick didn't realize that it was in his subconscious. So when he wrote the song, with Keith, 
It was something that they then agreed to sign over the credit to KD Lang because it was so similar and it was totally innocent. It's just the fact that Mick Jagger didn't realize the melody was in his head subconsciously. In 1997, she released Drag and in 2003 picked up another Grammy for her collaboration with Tony Bennett and that was on their album, A Wonderful World. In 2004, she released Hymns of the 49th Parallel and that was a tribute album of covers to the great Canadian singer-songwriters. In 2006, she collaborated with other artists as well as in 2007, teaming up with Anne-Marie. And this was one of Katie's idols when she was growing up. And the album was called Anne-Marie Duets, Friends and Legends. And in 2008, she released Watershed. Her greatest hits compilation was released in 2010 as well. At the 2013 Juno Awards, she was inducted into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame. She would also perform Hallelujah again in 2017 at Leonard Cohen's Memorial Celebration. It's great to have a look back here at Katie Lang's version of a classic as it then turned out to be after Leonard Cohen initially released it without a great deal of fanfare. But here, just a standalone version as well. So unique, so full of expression and emotion and one of those performances that you can just sit back and appreciate it for the art that it is. But thank you guys for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep the suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.